Hello, in this video we will be taking you through the Hopcroft Carp algorithm. Hopefully after watching this video you will have a better understanding of the algorithm. The Hopcroft Carp algorithm takes an unweighted bipartite graph as input and returns the maximal cardinality matching. Don't worry if you don't understand some of these terms, they will be shortly explained to you. Here is an example of a bipartite graph. The bipartite graph contains vertices. These vertices are divided into two disjoint sets, for example set A and set B. Circled are the edges in a bipartite graph. Each edge is a possible match between two vertices. However, an edge cannot match two vertices that are in the same set. You're probably wondering what a matching is. Well, as shown in this example, a matching is a set of edges without common vertices. In these following graphs, the matching will be shown by black edges. In this second bipartite example, we have two vertices matched to the same vertex, thus having a common matched vertex. And so we can say that this bipartite graph is not a matching. Finally, in this third example, we have a maximal matching. This is what we aim to output using the Hopcroft Carp algorithm. A maximal matching is when we have the largest possible number of edges in the matching and there are no more augmenting paths. Therefore, we will need to understand what an augmenting path is. A path is an augmenting path if it starts at an unmatched vertex, it ends at an unmatched vertex, and the edges in the path alternate between being in the matching and not being in the matching. Here is a visualization to help you understand the concept. This is a matched bipartite graph that we'll be trying to find an augmenting path for. Highlighted are unmatched vertices. Let's see if we can find an augmenting path. First, traverse from the unmatched vertex on the left via an unmatched edge, and then alternate edge type, traversing via a matched edge. We then alternate again, traversing via an unmatched edge. We keep alternating until we finally find an unmatched vertex. If we don't finish an unmatched vertex, we can say there are no augmenting paths. Hurrah! We have now arrived at an unmatched vertex. Therefore, we can say that the path we have just tra traversed is an augmenting path. Here is the augmenting path we have just found, started at the highlighted vertex on the left. The usefulness of this idea will come later when we go through the next example. So now we understand the basic concepts, we're going to look at the hopcroft carp algorithm in a bit more detail. So I've got the pseudo code here. The first thing that you can see in there is we initialize the current matching to be empty. Then we enter a loop where we use breadth-first search to build an alternating level graph rooted at unmatched vertices in set A, which is the set on the left. Next, we augment the current matching M with maximal set of vertex disjoint shortest length paths, and we use depth-first search to do this. We carry on doing this, so repeating these steps until there are no more augmenting paths, and then finally we return M. Don't worry if you don't understand that completely because I'm going to go through it step by step now uh, with an example. So I've got an example here and the example is for linking people, maybe a family, to different tasks that need to be done in preparation for Christmas. So on the bottom left I've got a list of people and the different tasks they're happy to do. And for completeness I've linked the task numbers to something actually that might need to be done for Christmas like writing cards. In the middle I've got the bipartite graph which is showing all the possible edges linking a person to the task they could do. So let's move to the first step. So the first step was initialize the current matching to be empty. So I've done that you can see there are no edges in the current matching. Now the next step is where we start using the breadth first search to build an alternating level graph rooted at unmatched vertices in set A. Uh, for the first step, this is quite trivial. So what I'm going to do is go on to the, the kind of the next iteration for it and do it there because it's a bit more beneficial and probably better for you to learn from. So after doing the current, the first iteration, you can see I've got this matching here, and I've actually highlighted the vertices that are unmatched in yellow. What we actually have to do is we get the unmatched vertices on the left side in set A and we put them at the top of our alternating level graph. Next, we need to look in our graph and table and see what edges that are not in the matching go from these vertices. So if I look in the table for Luke, I've got an edge to seven and an edge to two, so I add those to my graph. And for R, I've got an edge to six and an edge to seven, so I add them into my graph. Okay, so now we're on the right side of the graph, and now we've got to put into our graph edges that are in the matching. So if we look in our bipartite graph, we can see there highlighted in blue, there is an edge from 2 to J. 
7 to E, and 6 to T. Then we move back over to the left, and we're going to look for edges that are not in the current matching that go from J. So notice that J to 2 is not included here because that is in the current matching. So I have J to 4 and J to 5, E to 3 and E to 6, and T to 7 and T to 5. Okay, so now what's going to happen is we're going to stop here because we've reached a level which has got unmatched vertices in it, which are 4 and 5. Uh, we stop here. We do not need to go on any further. We move on to the next part of our loop, which is to augment the current matching M with a maximal set of vertex disjoint shortest length paths. Now you're probably wondering what vertex disjoint means. What that means is if I've got two paths, I cannot have the same vertex appear in both of them. So for example, I could not have the vertex J appear in both of them. They've got to all be different vertices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from number four there, and I'm going to use the depth first search to try and get to an unmatched vertice on the other side, so either L or R. So I'm going to move down this tree, and I get to L there. So I've completed that now. And what we need to do now to make sure that these vertices don't appear in another path, we actually remove them from this graph. Whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to make sure I write down the path so I can remember it. So I do that. And now I'm going to go from 5 and do another depth first search. 5 to T, T to 6, and 6 to R, and remove them. Okay, notice now that there is no more unmatched vertices for me to go from, so I've finished this part of the algorithm there. Notice I've used either a hyphen or an equal sign in my paths. Now, the hyphen sign is to denote an edge that's not actually in the current matching, and the equal sign is to denote an edge that is in the current matching. So force J is not in there, J to 2 is in there. Now I'm going to actually use these paths and augment them with my current matching. So if you look over, I've now added the edges 4 to J and 2 to L. and removed the edge J to 2, which I've shown with a dotted line. And I'm going to do the same with the other part. And that leaves me with this matching here. Now, the condition of our loop was to keep going until there are no more augmenting paths. There are no more augmenting paths in this graph. So I move on, and the final step was to return the current matching M. Now we hopefully understand how the Hotcroft Cop algorithm works, we are going to analyse the time complexity of the algorithm. We are going to first look at line 1. Line 1 is the initialization of the current matching to null. This is an operation that takes constant time. Now let's take a look at lines 2 to 5. The time complexity of this loop will be the maximum possible iterations that the Hopcroft Cop algorithm will perform before returning the maximum matching. We are now going to find out the maximum number of iterations. If you take a look at the right, we let m dash equal the maximum matching, m equal the current matching, and we have a lemma stated. Lemma one states that after n iterations, the augmenting path must be at least length n. Using lemma one, we can say that after root v iterations, the augmenting path must be at least length root v. Lemma two states, that the, max, the difference between the maximum matching and the current matching can be at most v divided by n, where n is the length of the shortest augmenting path. From lemma 2 and using lemma 1, we can say that the number of remaining paths after root v iterations is v divided by root v, which is equivalent to root v. Looking at the statement, we can say that after root v iterations, we can only iterate a maximum of root v times additionally until there are no more augmenting paths, thus breaking the loop. We can therefore say that the maximum number of iterations is equal to 2 root v, which gives us a time complexity of big O of root v. Now, let's look at lines 3 and 4, which are enclosed by the loop. Line 3 runs the algorithm breadth first search, and line 4 runs the algorithm depth first search. Both of these algorithms have run in linear time and have time complexities of big O of e. So the time complexity enclosed by the loop is big O of E. Combining the time complexity of the number of iterations of the loop and the time complexity enclosed within the loop gives us a total time complexity of big O of E times root V. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this has helped you understand the algorithm.